In my last video, we looked over the Quest productivity issues, my concerns with productivity. Today, though, I wanted to bring along a new friend, which is the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, this was actually unexpected for me when I made last week's video. I didn't expect that within a week I would have the Apple Vision Pro. Um, I browse Facebook Marketplace very often and found a very good deal, a deal that was too good to pass up. So I pulled the trigger and I have been using it now. And I'm going to make some videos about this, comparing and contrasting these um, four productivity use cases. But that's actually not what today's video is about at all. See, most of you who have come here for AR and VR content know that it basically started with this open facial interface for the Quest 3. And the open facial interface gives you so much more peripheral vision. And I find that to be very beneficial when I'm just walking around in pass-through mode. The Apple Vision Pro is primarily a pass-through device. That was like the whole emphasis of the product in the very beginning. They want you to feel like you can walk around and look at people, right? That's the whole eye thing and everything. Uh, so one of the things that I was surprised about when I started using this device, and, and I kind of knew this, but uh, it has a far smaller field of view than the Quest 3, and uh, it was a little goggly. It feels kind of more closed off. Now, it does make up for that with the fact that it has an incredible OLED screen uh, that is very high resolution, and again, I'll talk about the differences in the future, but I, um, I have to buy a different interface. I bought this as a used device, so this uh, they call it a light shield. This light shield is technically the wrong size for my face, and I've been using it just fine. I get these weird alerts that tell me to adjust it all the time, and I figured, you know what, since I can't use this facial interface, this light shield, uh, practically, I might as well experiment with it. This is a pretty expensive uh, piece, and there are maybe 30 different types of light shields for different face sizes compared to the Quest's singular uh, size, but this light shield is made of fabric. There's a plastic frame inside, a metal attachment piece that's magnetic, and then just some fabric. So we're going to cut it open, and we're going to make our own open facial interface for the Apple Vision Pro. Now, I want to be clear. The reason I'm doing this is not because this is a smart decision. This is, again, like a $200 piece if you buy it new, but this is not the right size for my face, and I figured it's not really worth the time for me to resell it, and this experiment is probably more fun for me than the time it would take to resell it. I figure we could learn something together, see uh, really what benefits we get from it, uh, there's a lot of plastic around this, so I'm not sure exactly how much we'll gain from it, but let's get started. So if we take a look here, I see that there's this outer layer, this inner lining, and that inner lining has two sides to it. So there's like a, a gray exterior and then the black interior. I will say it is very durable. So if you have any concerns about longevity here, this thing will hold up. I'm actually having trouble ripping it. We're back in action here. I have some fabric scissors, so hopefully this will make the job a little bit easier. I do have another light seal uh, that is showing up today. So I will be using this light seal without any other available light seal for at least the next eight hours or so. Uh, given that I really enjoy the open interface on the Quest 3, I think this will probably be just fine. I'm not really too concerned about how this will go. I'm actually really looking forward to it. For a second, I thought about maybe manufacturing a open light seal um, specifically for this use case, but there are so many different sizes of this light seal that Really, manufacturing has to be a pretty complex process, I think. Um, unless, I guess, you did it in a like one size fits all kind of way, kind of like the Quest does. Um, honestly, though, I'd have to you'd have to start doing a lot about like facial sizes. You'd have to like Apple didn't do one size fits all for a reason. Um, and I will say, even using the improperly sized facial interface right now versus the Quest. Um, one, this improperly sized one for the Apple Vision Pro still feels better than the <laughs> one-size-fits-all one coming from the Quest. Um, I don't think that this shouldn't impact eye tracking at all. My understanding is that eye tracking won't be affected by light at all. Um, and actually, when you take the test, when you do the eye tracking test um, or setup, it 
tests with a handful of different lighting settings. So I think it's probably going to be fine regardless. And I'll just see if I can cut right there. We're making progress. I feel like I'm about halfway. Okay, there's a, this nose piece has like a slightly structural piece of plastic running inside. Like a piece of ribbing. To be fair, this is all plastic. <laughs> Everything except the metal is plastic. The fabric is polyester, which is plastic. So don't breathe that in. It's just a bunch of microplastics. Well, would you look at that? The scissors are a million times better. Even the cuts are cleaner. Whose idea was it to take a razor to this in the first place? Um, I am left-handed, and now I have to start possibly using these scissors backwards. I use right-handed scissors primarily uh, just because... There are some things in life I think are not worth doing with your dominant hand if your dominant hand tends to be the minority. Like, imagine if I had to find left-handed scissors every time I wanted to cut something. It's far better just to use the <laughs> the more common product, like guitars. Imagine trying to find a left-handed guitar every single time or just playing the guitar backwards because you're, oh, well, you're left-handed. Just play the right-handed guitar, get used to it. It's interesting, the actually limited touch points that this product has, there's just a couple of wires, really, that are holding it together. I'll show you in a minute when, when we're done here. So this is a 24N. That's what the size is here, which I, I could have seen if I had just taken the padding off. Uh, the size that I am, that's arriving for me is a 21W, and the N or W means narrow or wide. Uh, I looked up a sizing chart on Reddit, which, by the way, I posted on Reddit about the fact that I got a good deal on this product. <laughs> and the Reddit really liked that. <laughs> there are a lot of people that obviously felt buyer's remorse for buying it at such a high price. Um, the reason I waited is because I had the Quest 3 and I figured it would just be far better to wait until the price went down. But I've had some cash set aside for this product for a pretty long time because I knew I would be getting one. Uh, it was just a matter of when. Uh, I, again, I will do a full comparison at some point in time. I know, look, I, here's the thing. I also know many other people have done comparisons. So, uh, you know, don't wait on me if you're just looking for like a first impressions. But the reality is that given I'm working in the tech space, given I do a lot of UI UX design, my intention is to do comparisons to the software, uh, comparisons to productivity. Again, um, I probably will make an entire video specifically about window management because I think that is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, in a uh, immersive application that requires you to be completely covered in, you know, software. Okay, we're getting close to finished here. Um, I think I probably could have found a way to pry. I probably could have pried the plastic apart. I might actually do that then um, later. It seems like a pretty soft plastic. It's meant to be flexible. I think I might break it. It's, it's like definitely glued together. So I think for the time being, I'm happy with this. I might experiment with it later on. Okay, now let's get cleaned up. So here's the interface now with everything cut apart. You can see there are basically two connector points on both sides. So four points of contact in total. Uh, on the bottom, there are these points here. And then on the top, there are these points here. And deceptively, you might think that there are two more, but look, this actually isn't in contact. So this part just pushes against it, which is rather interesting. I'm not sure, maybe for the different sizes, maybe the sizes make this piece different. So when I get the wide size, I'll check, check to see if this component is the same, because if this is shorter here, it would let this open more, which would then contribute to a wider face, um, the, the wider availability. At least for me, it pushes a little bit. And you can see, like, I definitely can see some peripheral. Let me put it on the device. So you can see through. I mean, it's a look for sure. Um, personally, I'm not crazy about the dark plastics at all. Uh, I think the whole thing would be better if it was lighter. But I'm really not trying to do blackout mode most of the time. Uh, in terms of fit, it... Oh, I don't have the foam on. <laughs> no wonder it feels weird. I will say this head strap... Very, very good. I I thought it was overrated when I heard people talking about it, but I think it is now underrated. This is the best head strap I have used. Okay, let's give this a try. So the one thing I noticed right away, there are plenty more reflections. So many more reflections on the glass. Before, it was almost uh, maybe very, like, very minimal, one or two reflections on the bottom. Now there are way more reflections on the glass. As soon as the screen turns on, though, I don't notice anymore. What do I think about it? So, 
I can definitely see in my peripheral. I can definitely see much more on the sides here. Uh, I can see around my nose. I, I think it is basically what you would expect it to be. So it'll show my eyes as long as I have uh, like my camera open. So it actually it will kind of identify, oh, hey, there's a face. I should show show eyes right now. Hey, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> uh, peripheral vision, I think, is a is a plus. Overall, I'm happier with it. I do also appreciate the fact that I can like kind of feel air when I move around. I don't feel like I'm kind of stuck in a little uh, space. It's nowhere near as as open as the Quest interface. This Quest interface is is really wide, whereas this is pretty minimal. And I was thinking I could take a Dremel and remove even more of this plastic here. The primary foam section I probably wouldn't touch just because this is mostly the structural component down here. I think there's a little bit of extra give, but the, one of the reasons I was interested in trying this is because uh, I, I've seen people talk about using this just uh, without that. Uh, I will use a piece of foam to rest on my nose to make it a little bit less painful. And honestly, I mean, this is this would be my preferred use case if I could if I could really choose it. Uh, I do get a warning that I'm too close to the displays sometimes, so I find two pieces of this foam tends to be pretty comfortable. And I'm not sure how much you can see of that, but at least for me, this feels <laughs> this feels perfect because I can see my surroundings. I don't have anything blocking, like touching my face. I think a little nose guard would actually solve the problem more than cutting the interface like I did here. Because as much as this opens it up, it's still... I gotta un loosen it first. Whew. As much as this opens it up, and it definitely helps with the weight as well, but it still doesn't solve for opening it up as much as I'd like. I could probably remove a pretty hefty chunk of this plastic down here if I cut some of this foam, but then I would lose one of the structural points, and I think that would probably cause more problems. Either way, this is my experimental light shield, so I hope you like that experiment. If we had a little piece of foam that would rest directly on the nose right here, I think that would be the best use case overall because it puts the pressure on your nose, which would probably make your nose sore, but it does give you the greatest FOV possible with a device like this. Well, I hope you liked that experiment. The Apple Vision Pro is a very unique device, and obviously the Quest 3 and the Apple Vision Pro have very different use cases. I'm primarily interested in productivity. I love using pass-through mode, so I will be stress testing both of these products continually moving forward. This is a space that I am deeply invested in, and I think it's important to keep providing the most beneficial feedback possible because I want these devices to be better. Again, I do work in the tech industry. I build software products for a living. UI and UX are my bread and butter. So when it comes down to it, the feedback I'm providing is not meant to tear companies down. I hope that it can help build them up because I want to be using these products far into the future. And as for you, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe. I'll see you around.